Yeah, we're talking about group um, sets. So group sets are actually a massive opportunity for you to build pre-selection. So you're getting a lot of, you're front-loading a lot of the work that needs to be done. So you do a set, if she's by herself, she's like, oh, he seems super cool. He seems like he would, it's plausible that he would be, have lots of friends and stuff. But she goes away and thinks, ah, but maybe he's just got really good at doing cold approach. Maybe he just is out approaching woman after woman. And that's the reason why um, he seems like he is social, but actually he has no friends. And also, if he's out doing cold approach, um, why is he doing that if he already has women in his life? Or why would he stop me? And actually, I'm not a 9 out of 10. I'm 7. So that means he would be stopping every 7 that walks past. So it creates this whole thing in their head, and they just think, well, what's going on? Whereas if she's with two friends, and uh, you... You know, you you seize control of the group, so you open the set and you be like, "Hey, um, do you think we're gonna help make a good couple?" And you hug her, and then you're like, "No, she's probably too short for me." And then you start giving one of them attention, and you make her laugh, make her laugh, and then all of them are like, "Does he like me?" And then they all start competing for you. You have done a lot of the work because you've created social proof, pre-selection, you've dominated the group, so you've demonstrated everything, and it's a lot easier then. And then you'll be like, hey, "Do you know what?" I'm going to give her a chance and give you a number. And then she's like, oh, and you go away. Um, yeah. Whereas when you're just on that with that girl alone, you can't do any of that. You've got less leverage in the situation. It's just one on one. It's like it becomes a little bit binary. Yeah, that's interesting because I, I think for myself and, um, I, and I've spoken about this uh, to other people, um, generally girls that come out on dates, they tend to be girls who were solo. And that not, might not necessarily be because of the fact that they were with a friend or with friends. It, um, it could just be because of the fact that most of the time you are going to probably approach girls who are solo as opposed to in twos or threes. Um, but yeah, I th I, like almost every guy who, who I've spoken to has said the same thing, which is that most girls that come out on dates, um, they, they were approached when they were by themselves. And <clears throat> there is also an issue as well where like, Although you can display like all these attractive qualities when there is like a, a group, sometimes the girl might feel judged by her friends for meeting up with, with, with that guy. Uh, that yeah, it, 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 yeah, it just takes one person. If there's four girls in a group yeah. or three girls, it, it, does, it just takes one to go turn around and say, don't meet up with him, who the fuck is he? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. And, and, and also, um, they, they, it's less, they can't they can't explain it properly so the way that they met you is kind of socially unacceptable whereas yeah. if they're the only witness to that then they can explain it away to their friends later and be like oh do you know what it was this, like hollywood moment whereas when their friends are there and they mm. saw it um it's like oh, you didn't meet with that fucking creepy guy did you <laughs> that can happen yeah but yeah. uh the thing is is you got to think about it like this um there's a selection bias yeah so we mostly approach uh, single sets, right? Mm. And as a result, most guys only approach single sets. So when they do group sets, they're not good at it. They haven't got mm. the confidence and ability. And then therefore, that's less, less likely to go or anyway. And then a yeah. group set can go very badly or very well. If you do a group set in an amazing way, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. If you yeah. do it in a bad way, you're just going to get three yells all rubbishing you. Whereas if you do a mediocre day game approach, she could be horny, um, available, and then make a story up in her head as to why she should be up with this guy. Yeah, or oh, it, it could literally just be one of the girls in the group is jealous, and she'll it, sabotage it for that reason. It can happen, it can and that happen, happen, yeah. That that happens certainly in night game a lot. Uh, yeah, it can I happen. Mean, yeah, it can yeah. happen. I mean, night game is a whole <clears throat> different world. Um, night night game is is all about fast escalation. Anyone who goes out trying to get numbers at night is probably playing the wrong game. Mm. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It's it's again, um, the great opportunity comes great risk. So, uh, for example, it's like Instagram, right? Um, Instagram. If you're if you're um, if you have a million followers on Instagram, it's very easy to get women. You're going to have women DMing you every day. You're going to have yeah. about ten applications for sexual relations. Uh, if you have if you're following 2,000 and you've got 43 followers, 
and two likes on every picture. Instagram is the worst place in the world. You're better off not even letting a girl know you have Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's the same with group game. If you're very good with groups of people, then it can be a massive DHV. If you're not very good at it, you don't have the competence, it's actually worse. It can be worse, it can be a DLB. But it's something that you should work on, I think. What I see a lot of guys doing, and you may probably see this with your clients, is that, that they do, like even with cold approach, even if you forget about a game or mind game, they do one specific type of approach all the time. And they yeah. just, they're, they're digging a hole for themselves and they're, they're bogging down and, and biting their head against the wall. It's about, game is about how to attract women in a variety of different settings. And so you should have a well-rounded um, program where you're doing, let's say you're just doing cold approach, yeah? Okay, we could do traditional cold approach day game set on Oxford Street, right? We're gonna do some uh, stuff in the shops. So how do I start up a conversation that seems innocuous? So it doesn't even feel like she's been approached because game that really will lead to, you know, getting girls. Uh, it's subtle game where girls don't realize they're being game. So if you're, um, exactly. If you're, if you're in a if you're in a shopping center and you're like, you're looking at something that you stood next to her on the shelf and you're like, it's just not going to work, is it? Mm. And she's like, what? Yeah. And you just like look super relaxed. You're looking at this and you pick it up and you go, and you, you go, it's it's green. It's not going to work, is it? What do you think? And she'd be like, eh, I don't know, maybe. And you're like, would you buy it? What what did you actually buy? And then you just yeah. start segueing. No, those are the best yeah. approaches. Yeah. 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 Actually, and like some sometimes, you know, um, guys will say to me, like, what's the best way to open the girl? What's the best opening statement? Or what's the best opener? You know, a lot of the time I tell guys um, one that she doesn't remember because, yeah. you know, that way it's, it's far more nat it'll feel far more natural, far more seamless, less of a like a forced thing. It's less like you're trying to like force a conversation upon her. And then when, when, you know, when she looks back and thinks back on it, you know, she might be thinking, oh yeah, that was a thing, you know, it's a thing that he, he did and he, maybe he's probably done, done it a million times before. So <clears throat> when it feels like it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, nothing particularly special, uh, the focus therefore becomes on the actual bulk of the interaction and the connection that was made, the emotional connection, how, she, how you actually made her feel. And that's what she's going to remember. She's not going to be thinking, oh yeah, he came up to me and thought I was really nice. And I've heard that, you know, before, for example, you know. But yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great way to phrase it. What you said there, because I've never heard that before when you said, um, you know, she should not remember how the interaction began. Mm. It, it, and it should also be, um, it, it, it should be, yeah, it should be like, she doesn't really know. And like, it should be kind of like, did I approach him or did he approach me? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I, I actually reprogram their mind, so I make them believe that they approached me. Mm. Um, well, you can even open a set like that. You can just be like... Yeah, you can accuse her. Yeah, you can say, sorry, what, what was that? Oh, I thought you said something. But yeah, yeah, I haven't seen you for ages. And then be like, she'd be like... We don't believe we met. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, what do you mean? She'd be like, what? Yeah. And you're like, okay. What are you up to anyway? Yeah, or like, for, 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 yeah, for example, let's say like you're on a date with a girl and um, <clears throat> you're talking about how you met because that's always a really good topic to speak about on a date. Um, you know, you could accuse her of approaching you and then she'd be like, no, you came up to me and be like, no, because you were really in a nice sexy dress or whatever. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, you could be like, well, actually, no, it, it was you. Who, um, looking you, you made the first move good. there. Looking real good. Real good. <laughs> In, infrared yeah. reference. Yeah. 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 Check out infrared. <laughs> That's dark. I had some in some you, uh, say, you, you saved my life by introducing me to infrared. Yeah, I, I was yeah. actually going down the wrong path in life. Really? And then you. You made me realize that there's a the pop universe like that. Like yeah, yeah. It. The world needs to see it. The whole As world one of my friends, girls said, who is Spanish, she said, I need to go to Spain to be in my domain. I thought that was, <laughs> oh, uh, but so SD, you as well. SD, was that Spain in my domain? SDID, as Kenneth would say. Yeah, I need to be in, yeah, exactly. I need to be in Spain to be in my domain. Yeah. But you, you can relate to that because you're, you're Spanish, right? Half Spanish. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if your viewers yeah. knew. I don't know. Maybe you were trying to keep it from them. No, I, no, no, I've said that like in like 
at least like 80% of my infields. I, I, well, actually, back in the day, I, I used just to tell the girl, oh, by the way, I'm half Spanish. I don't know, it was just something I would always say in my interactions. But I say it a bit yeah. less now, though, but yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, um, if the girl I, is Spanish, I always do tell her then. If, if the girl was actually Spanish. Yeah. Um, I've actually got... Uh, I've got a... I've got some, um, I've got fish in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you think about turning it into huh? some paste? Are you think about turning it into some paste and then dunking our heads in it or something? I've actually got, um, some fish in the oven, yeah. Uh, I've actually got a briefcase in a room in my office, uh, full of anchovies. And I've got a man watching it 24-7. I've got another man watching him 25-8. And the whole situation is being recorded by CCTV technology. Okay. Have you got... Can we get a little glimpse? I don't want people to know where it is, so we'll, um, yeah, we'll skip that one. Uh, but yeah, um, is, there, is there anything else you want to ask me about the getting of women? Yeah, um, well... You went to uh, Mexico and you've been traveling a bit, haven't you? So we could talk a bit about that. Um, like yeah, what your, was, yeah. We're in play yeah, experiences. We've got, we've got the video on the main Life of Fire channel, which is not pick up necessarily what I did, but we, we dropped it on there. That was really good. Um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man of God. I don't really partake in sexual activity, but uh, when I was out there, there were lots of sets, lots of leads, um, mm -hmm. lots of women that were that were available within the sexual marketplace. Okay. So I and how, how did you um, with them. How, how did you find the uh, the girls there? Did you find them really attractive, um, really receptive, or you know? What well, as I say, I'm a, I'm a man of God, so I don't really engage in sexual behaviours, but. Um, I think they were pretty freaking hot, and I absolutely would. Mm. Um, the, the thing is, is I, I'm not so keen on um, Mexicanos. There was a lot of Europeans there because, yeah. Um, yeah, if I was gonna pick pick a wife for myself, they probably would be uh, European. If that makes sense, or of European yeah. culture, culture-wise, or maybe American. Um, but yeah, I mean. Everyone has a different taste, right? But Mexico was great. Mexico was good. Um, beautiful places, you know. You've been to Playa before. I was in Playa. Yeah, yeah. I was there for like 10 days. Um, we had lots of fun, met lots of cool people. Um, something, a little hack you guys can use is when you go to a new town, like you arrive in that town with your friends, make a, make a WhatsApp group. That's what we do. We make a WhatsApp group. Uh, call it like Player Social. And just go around approaching everyone and adding them to the group, primarily women. Um, and just say it's a, it's a group for super cool people and then you just like when you're at a restaurant with your friend post a picture be like hey who's coming you know put all your leads in there put them all in there girls can't really flake on you the only way they can properly flake on you or stop being exposed to you is by leaving the group so if if you're watching this video there's probably a 95% chance you have got shit Instagram um, because an, a good Instagram would be at least 5,000 plus with great photos, right? And most people don't have that, most guys, including myself, right? So, you, you know, if you're Brad Pitt or you're a guy with one follower, if you both make a, a WhatsApp profile, you're on equal terms because there's no numbers attached to it, right? So you can then make a WhatsApp group and just add all the women to the WhatsApp group. Mm. And, and it works you, well. What, it works well in yeah. a place like Playa because it's a bit smaller. Um, it's a bit more like there's a there's a. It's obviously very transient, and there is a lot of people. But uh, you know, a lot of people coming and going. But it's still quite a close knit place, and it, and and the actual kind of venues or, or like where the areas of where people actually hang out is, is is actually quite relatively small. It's it's essentially like a town. It's it's essentially a town, so it's not that big, but you've got a huge amount of influx of people coming and going essentially which is why there's a lot of people and why uh, uh, you can do you know a lot of approaching there 
Yeah, and then, um, yeah, absolutely, I agree with that. And also, we went to a bit of road trip across Europe. So I just got back, actually, about four weeks ago. I was gone for sort of six weeks. So we drove um, to Rotterdam, uh, drove to Hamburg, Gdansk, then over to uh, Lat- uh, Riga in Latvia, um, then Warsaw, Krakow, Budapest, long, long after I have other places as well, um, Bulgaria. Real good fun, had an amazing time. Uh, actually, a city called Poznan in Poland is a good place. It's massively underrated. People don't seem to be going there, but it's well, really good. How do you spell that? Uh, Poznan, P O Z N A N, if I'm not mistaken. Don't hold me to that. Poz- Poznan? Yeah, maybe someone, if I spell it wrong, can. Oh, okay, okay yeah, I've heard it's, of that, it's, yeah. It's a western city in Poland. It's yeah. not too far from the border. Yeah. Uh, German yeah. border. Because, um, like, yeah, no, I was going to say, like, I think like the second tier cities in Poland are potentially like really good because there's not that much approaching going on there so you're not like you know you're going to go she's not going to have been approached before whereas I, I think you know this this summer in like in like Krakow and Warsaw like every day game when his dogs come over there just because of the fact mm-hmm. that it's just like a, it, it, you know it, in theory on paper it seems like a really good place because like you know Polish girls are generally very nice then you've got the influx of all the Ukrainian girls as well, uh, which which in theory would make it a fantastic place. Uh, but obviously everyone else knows that and everyone else has gone over there as well. And, and you know, like if, if one guy, you know, opens a girl in English and then, you know, 20 minutes later another guy opens her in English and it's all, all of a sudden she's thinking, okay, this is a bit of a thing uh, that's happening. So, but yeah, how did you find your experience in uh, Krakow and Warsaw? Did you find any girls who'd already been approached um, or so bear, bear in mind I'm a man of God I was just there um, absorbing the atmosphere um, we were filming doing some photos uh, obviously we for the videos we do a lot of um, filming so um, we were doing approaches uh, I found super receptive uh, we got found ourselves in situations where we were hanging out with people um, guys girls getting food drink lots of Ukrainians there actually Mm. Uh, look, Ukrainian women, of course, um, because of the unfortunate situation that's occurring right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was a great time. It was good. Gdansk, Kr- Krakow is great. It's great, especially in the summer. There were loads of people. Uh, Warsaw is my favorite city in Poland because it feels more like I like to go to a city and feel like there's a limitless potential. Mm. I it's big, lots of people, lots of stuff going on. Reminds me of home in London, which is why I love Sydney. Um, over Melbourne, it's why I love Warsaw over Krakow. I'm like, I'm just that guy. Um, but I found Warsaw to be amazing, and I found Budapest absolutely amazing. I highly recommend it. Uh, but I, I've actually why, why was uh, Budapest in particular so great? Uh well, first of all, the city is big, reminds me of London. The architecture is great, but. The vibe there is just amazing. Um, yeah. People are super friendly, open. The nightlife is great. Um, very receptive out there. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. I remember I went there like, um, uh, like three years ago. It was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't like super, super amazing for me. Um, but I've heard like other people, it's it's a bit hit and miss. Like some people have an amazing experience. Others are a bit like. Uh, was all right, not that great, but yeah, I, I highly, I highly recommend it. Yeah, uh, but it was good fun. It was real, but real yeah. So that's interesting because, what, like in Odessa, I went there first time in 2020, and then again last year. Like the first year, it was just incredible for me. I was just getting like a new date every day, almost with it with a really hot girl. And the the second uh, year, it was just nowhere near that much. It was just like I, it, I don't know. It's, it's very bizarre. Like it was just nowhere near as as much, I guess you could say, success, um, which is uh, interesting. Yeah, I actually have to go. Um, yeah, I've got to go walk the dogs. Um, and I've got to meet someone in the park. Um, but it's been an amazing um, experience and privilege to be on your channel with you. And I hope that we will do this again very soon. I think. Yeah. yeah. We should we should try and do this every. Every now and again, I'm, I'm yeah, for, sure. to, to, for us to film again um, in the week. 
and um, we can cover some more topics. Maybe some of your viewers will let you know what they want us to talk about. And yeah, that's true. Can, like, leave in the comments, too. leave in the comments any uh, topic ideas, uh, that kind of thing, because yeah, we can have a little go at covering stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, and um, yeah, check out uh, LOC Pickup, I'm sure he'll um, link it down below. Um, LOC yeah. Pickup on YouTube and um, LOC Pickup on Instagram. Uh, we post a lot of reels um, on Instagram um, and there'll be longer form content on the, the main YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, um, yeah, I fucks with you, I fucks with you all. Yeah. Just keep it, keep it 100. You yeah, know what I'm for saying? sure. <laughs> um, yeah, check check out um, Ed Game Coaching as well. Uh, that's my channel. It's been going for a few years now, and yeah, uh, yeah it's been really fun. Been kind of uh, outside of the UK at the moment uh, in Turkey, which has been really really good. Um, and yeah, it's just been having a really really good time. As a matter of fact, it's like for me, Turkey, like well, from what I've experienced, it's actually been the best dating experience I've. I've ever had like from anywhere I've been and the reason for that is because um, just like the, 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 the quantity and quality of just you know hot girls coming out mm -hmm. on dates with relatively not not too much effort you know not too much grind because normally like in London for example if you want to get a date with a genu like a genuinely hot girl you do have to grind a bit and you do have to put in effort uh, here for me it hasn't necessarily been the case uh, as you know anywhere near as much the case so yeah it's just been an, an amazing dating experience um, yeah overall. I need to check it out man I've only ever been to Marmaris um, in south of Turkey which is just basically that place overrun with British tourists it's totally mm, nah, that's, yeah, that's I, not my vibe I wanna um, I need to get out there man you've been we had a conversation the other day on the phone and you were telling me it's pretty lit out there so mm. um and you know you you never want to cap, so I definitely want to get out, get on out there, and uh, as Kenneth would say, just experience the the action. <laughs> or well, you have to read ETA, that. <laughs> ETA, experience the action. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, apart from that, I'm sure you're going to head out to Spain to be in your domain, and um, yeah, Uncle Lucy's still dominant, I guess. Okay. How is he no, in general? Just dominant. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Lucy taught me everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I better go. I'm creeping out your your audience, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure they're curious to know more, so we can explore things in further detail at a later date. Um, but yeah, hit me up with any specific questions. At this point, I just want to help. So, uh, any questions, ask him below. I might check back in on his comments later. Um, or ask him on my channel, or comment on one of my videos, or Instagram. Yeah, whatever or you make want a to video. Do. Or we can just chat about it in the next time. For next time. Yeah, we can talk about it. We can make a, yeah. a video uh, specifically related to a topic if, it, if lots of guys are asking, I guess. Um, but at the same time, we've got to find it interesting. We're not going to just talk about something that we find boring. It's not just about you. We have to both enjoy us and the viewers, right? Mm, that's true. Because that, otherwise, they'd have us dressing up as leprechauns and running around. But we may not. Yeah. I might wear green, but I'm not going to go that far, you know. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Well, if you I'll wear green, does, does, if you wear green, does it sig signify that you're made of money, or does it signify you're Irish? Oh, you're a hippie. You know what I mean? If you like wearing green, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> or you're maybe a hippie. Yeah, you could be a hippie, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, oh, I'll, I guess I'll... I'll go on, sorry. No, well, or one of those uh, climate change people. Yeah. Uh, it depends. I think there's different types. There's climate change advocates, climate change activists and climate, climate change, change deniers deniers but there's also climate change um religious lunatics yeah that's true so there's, there's a, yeah like climate change I mean, is real i get it but that doesn't mean that we have to basically 
become completely insane as a result of it. Yeah. And drag the world down with us. We have to do it in a productive way. And, you know, obviously we need to make changes, but you push too far and you end up with the, uh, the energy situation that we yeah. have at the moment with Russia, where we shut down all of our own supplies of energy or, or and then we're, we're reliant on Russia. Um, so we need to balance out pragmatism in the short term and becoming more sustainable. But ultimately, the only way yeah. we'll solve it is through technology. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if we can remove we can politics, achieve, um, focus more on technology. Yeah, m nuclear fission, uh, that will solve it. Um, highly efficient solar panels. We cover uh, one one hundredth of the desert that exists in the in the world with high efficiency solar panels and it will power the whole planet. Mm. I read a lot um, about that stuff actually. You know, you could you could cover like a small segment of the Pacific Ocean with uh, solar panels and that would, you know, pretty much power the whole of the world's needs. And yeah. then there's and then there's geothermal power which is like huge potential. Something like you could power like, I don't know, like ten times the world's population. Um, if you actually harnessed uh, the maximum value of, of geo geothermal, but the problem is, is that it's not financially uh, viable, or like, or there's legislative uh, restrictions, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah. They, they'll work it out. It's a technology issue. It's not really a political one because ultimately, even if certain Western countries who have the time, money, and focus on these things can actually get a grip on it with current technology and reduce our carbon footprint it's a piss in the ocean because you know other countries in the world like africa can't afford or to even all african african people would care about in poorer parts of africa is how the hell do i get my next meal mm, yeah of course you, they ain't got time to be thinking about well i'm going to take the more expensive option here because yeah. it's more carbon threat so the only solution is to create the technology that just solves the problem and yeah. then that technology over time will become cheaper and it ends up being as cheap as like mobile phones. Now, poor people in Africa will have a mobile phone. So over time, the poor countries will adopt it when it becomes cheaper or cheap enough. Mm. Yeah. But it's a technological problem. It's not, it's not really a political one. Yeah. Um, and that applies for most things really, actually. Um, ultimately, it is a technological problem and it, and it shouldn't be a pol political problem, but because of the way the world is structured, it becomes a political problem. And people have yeah. become like they identify as a certain thing and that they have a certain preconception pre preconceived agendas and they thrust that out when ultimately like you said when you boil it down it should just be a techn technological uh, problem exactly and i think we we are privileged in the west there's there isn't a poor person doesn't exist relatively in the west compared to other countries you could have mm. no job live on the doll uh live in a bed sit but you are richer than many people in other parts of the world, like in places like Bangladesh, etc. Yeah. Um, you are a rich man, you're considered to be a rich man. So what do we have when, when you don't have to work, or you have a lot of spare time and stuff, like we do in the West, you start going on the internet and um, finding things to worry about because you no longer have to worry about how you get your next bottle of rice and how you drink some clean water. So our mind is programmed to worry about anything we can get our hands on. So if you go on the internet and you start saying, oh, we're all going to die, because everyone wants to feel like they're about to die, because it gives you something to focus on to stop yourself from dying. The moment you have no reason to continue to fight against the universe that wants to kill you, then you kind of panic. You, everyone wants to worry about something. And that's why COVID lockdowns were the worst situation for that. It was breeding grounds for people just going on the internet mm -hmm. and finding something to worry about, you know? Yeah, Whereas yeah in poor countries they actually have something to worry about and it keeps them busy and focused you know how do i clothe my family how do i feed my family how do i stop the rain from getting into my mud hut how do i get clean water how do i avoid having to walk nine miles each way to get dirty water every day yeah um then they ain't concerned about they ain't got time to think about nothing you know yeah yeah it's a good point yeah but anyway man i mean yeah i look forward to us talking again i've enjoyed the conversation and yeah yeah i've actually I, I tend to i wear my underpants when i walk my dogs have you got I underpants wear, on at the moment 
I go to the, yeah, I, I train in my underpants and I wear my under, I I haven't actually got any underpants on right now. Oh, okay. Is it just a right. shirt? And it's, oh, oh, might have to censor this. It's yeah, too much for YouTube. <laughs> okay, there goes the monetization. Yeah. Well, 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 you probably wouldn't have seen that because I just cut it out, but I did expose my, um, did you call it genitalia or not? Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't. That's the technical I just, term. I gave a sneak preview. Oh, we can put this on my like, OnlyFans now. Sneak peek, yeah. Um, <coughs> but yeah, Uncle Lucy remains dominant. Um, I love you all. And, um, Kenneth loves yeah. you too. All right, stay humble. Cool. All right, take care. Cheers for watching. If you'd be interested in one-to-one -one coaching with me where we'll go out in public and work on your approaching girls, or more generally with your social confidence, please visit my website ed-game.com